I'll continue with you. Before I introduce my next guest, I would like to show you a film uh, clip from one of her early films. And in her case, early films me mean silent. Uh, it, they don't make faces like that anymore, as you know, is a great line from Sunset Boulevard, but this is not from that. This scene is fairly contemporary. You want to see it? Here it is. <laughs> live from the New York subway and here one of the most glamorous ladies Miss Gloria Swanson Would you rather sit? I tell you, you're more used to sitting over here because twice I you've been am. here and you've sat over there. Maybe we shouldn't fool with a good thing. I don't think we should. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I was going to come. I forgot all about it now. I was what? going to come out. Wait, they'll think you've been censored. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Oh, I wasn't going to speak loud because, after all, I'm getting a little fed up being referred to as a silent picture actress. Oh, but I see. After all mean... these years now, I've, uh -huh. called, I've called myself Big Mouth. Even though you were silent in so many films. That was 1923, that film, wasn't it? Yes, and yeah. here in New York. And I sure. left California because I didn't want to play those femme fatales and wear a, just have a dress with a train that was longer and longer. Yeah. And so I, well, I lied to them and I got to, uh, to New York by some trickery of mine mm -hmm. and uh, finally said, uh, give me Zaza. And that began the character stuff and doing comedy again because, see, up to that time I'd been playing these very serious them fatales with uh, you know all kinds of head dudes and a lady valentino and nothing like this ever we had everything they used to say everything on the kitchen stove feathers yeah. sequins beads you know the works yeah. we all dressed that way then it, was there ever a woman who didn't think valentino was sexy by the way you knew him well, you? i had no occasion to think that he was except i would say <laughs> <laughs> We uh, played, did a picture together, and of mm -hmm. course, you know, you sort of get into the mood of a picture once in a while, but um, he was uh, different, that was it. I think he had that Latin smoldering type, you know, the rest of them, like Wally Reed was blonde and so on. No, no, no reflection, dear, you know. Oh, that's all right. I, I wanted to look like I... him, I'd put Vaseline on my hair. <laughs> no, but he was the Latin type, and we'd had the other type, yeah. the Nordic thing so long. And that was probably the reason for it. I'm sorry that I wasn't here when you had the distinguished guests. Oh, I am, I am too. Muskie, because I would love to have asked him a question. I was dying to ask him a question. I couldn't do it in the, in the room back there. It's too bad people have to leave the way they do. Yes. Um, you've called yourself the original hippie. Now, what do you mean by that? 
Have you stopped being well, one? Well, I guess it's because I don't go according to Hoyle, you know. They make rules, and uh, then I want to know why. I'm a why girl. Why this, why that? Mm -hmm. And so I haven't uh, gone along with all the rules and regulations when I was a young person in the picture business. I wouldn't allow photographers in the house. I didn't send Christmas cards to all of the um, columnists or cr Christmas presents. You've heard about all the presents they had in great big storehouses, Hopper and, and uh, Parsons and so on. I never even bothered and only sent her flowers when her husband died. But I never went along with, with what everybody else was doing, and I suppose this makes you a little bit hippie or wild or mad or something, or eccentric, I guess. And I wouldn't allow motion picture magazines in my house. And now, you're on Broadway, you're in Butterflies Are yes. Free, I guess, and packing them in. Um, but uh, you walked out on something the other day, on Lenny, I well, believe. You're going to start that one, too. Hmm? <laughs> well, did anyone tell you about that? Well, it's a, there's a time and a place for everything, and I don't yeah. think that kind of vulgarity is really, uh, should be on the stage, really. Frankly, why don't we have it out in the street, too? It wouldn't allow it, so... Mm -hmm. I don't uh, happen to, I, you, you know, I was, somebody misunderstood and thought I should know what's going on. Well, I had never seen the man that it was fashioned after. Lenny Bruce. I never had seen him. Mm -hmm. I do not read variety. I don't have time. I carry my mail around sometimes all day long and unable to, to read it now because so much is happening. And I frankly didn't know what it was about. Did and you think it was a lighthearted musical romp? I don't know what I thought it was, but I had been given the tickets by uh, the sister of the producer. And she said, well, you may not like it because there's some four-letter words. And I said, oh, good heavens, they're going to better get some new ones because the kids in kindergarten are using them now. And uh, I'm sure that won't shock me, but it wasn't that that shocked me. It was the what gyrations. Was it? Well, it was uh, real vulgarity. Oh, what, what kind? Ooh, you go and see it and you tell me. And you sit in the second row, right center, and see if you like it. Something and then you tell me. People in the second row see something that others well, don't? Well, I don't know. It depends. I happen to be too mm. close. Maybe without my glasses, I may not have seen a lot of things. And it may have been, a, you know, I might have passed over it. But I, unfortunately, was where I couldn't escate very easily. Could you I... describe the outlines of what you thought you saw? <laughs> you know, you're wicked. Am I? You're absolutely oh, I was just wondering, wicked. I wondered what specific thing would send a person up the aisle of the theater these days. Well, if you really want to know when we get off camera, I'll try in my, a, a ladylike way to tell you. Whisper it to me. No, oh, gosh, I couldn't. You couldn't whisper no, it? No, I couldn't. I couldn't. Well, couldn't. even if we turn the camera off for a second? <laughs> no. Well, I won't, I won't press it No, but it, it was that. very curious, the type mm. of laughter in that theater. Mm -hmm. Because once I uh, was taken to a... Um, what do you call it? wrestling match in California? Big Mom Mountain, Mountain Men Mountain Dean Dean, Dean yes. Yeah. And Laura Hope Cruz is uh, a lady of the theater, and I went and two escorts, and we went to this thing, which was quite strange, you know. And they were biting each other's toes, and it was gruesome, and they were oh, you could hear the bones cracking, and I I just wanted to get out of the place, but it was curious that you'd hear someone saying kill him, kill him, and you'd look at the face. And it would be a woman, and I would be absolutely amazed that some woman could get this much joy out of it. So I couldn't understand it. Well, the same thing happened in Lenny. You s heard a certain kind of uh, laughter, and there were women in that audience which I didn't understand. And they may have been there like I was, and couldn't get out without climbing over everybody, but I was right on the aisle. And uh, it w then I walked down the street, and we went over to see, before I joined the company, uh, or went into the play, uh, butterflies are free. And here you heard a kind of a musical laughter, totally different, totally different. And everybody was being amused and having fun. And I thought, oh, this is my kind. I, you know, yeah. I was sorry that, it, that I had to be seen doing this. Do you think there shouldn't be that kind of show, or do you think it should no, be? No, I don't care what people do. I just don't oh. want to be a party to it. That's all. Did anyone belch on stage? Oh, that's happened in pictures. Uh, that happened. Uh, the reason I ask that is you said in the article, you were interviewed in an article, and you said there's a time and place for everything. For example, you don't belch when you're kissing someone, which I think is probably a good point to remember. Well, I think uh, so, don't for you? For people who would like to there's, be popular. There's, there's, there's a time and a place for everything. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't want to get a reputation of being a drunk, for goodness sakes, don't go to a public restaurant and dance on the, on the table and, and wheel, reel all over the place and, and be crude and rude about it. Yeah. You're bound to, yeah, I always, when I was a child, that old cliche about, you know, what was it about the people you were seen with, you know, you become, they assume you're the same kind. But now nobody cares what anybody thinks, and, uh, oh, everything is, you know, it, I saw just a smattering of a little football, I don't know whether it was in a, 
What do you call it? Probably uh, promotion for Monday Night Football. Well, I saw that, and I thought, you know, when our athletes get to a point where their morale and morals go down, you know, this is pretty bad, because we have no heroes anymore for the youngsters growing up. And heroes, to me, should be somebody you look up to. Well, you look up to somebody you respect. Well, how can you respect them if they're taking bombs to make goals? or if they're throwing a game or something. Uh oh. You see? Now, so with that goes a certain... You know, I'm very much interested in the youngsters. And when I brought this up, I was... Uh, when I was in Cleveland, a sports writer, and I know very little bit about it, one person from Cleveland, I know very little about sports. I mean, the fine technical points of it. But a sports writer wanted to interview me, and I said, good heavens, what shall I talk about? Uh, I know so little. All they had to see me for 15 minutes. And finally came, and he t pointed his finger at me, and he said, I saw you on the stage. I'm told you're 71. It was then I was out on the road with it, and now 72. I was told that you were 71, you gallivant all over that stage, you act like a teenager, etc., etc., and the youngsters around you don't seem to have the energy you've got, and I want to know what you eat because I want to get these athletes who are finished at 30, 31, 32, He 33. wanted your diet. Yes, to feed them, and I said, but look, I only weigh 95 pounds. Can you imagine one of those characters, what do they call them, fullbacks? You, well, they call some of them that. Yeah. Well, I'm getting a well, distress signal. Oh, I know why it is. What? Stay tuned, and I'll tell you why I'm getting a distress signal. We have a message from our local stations. Oh. We'll be back. Subway, and here, one of the most glamorous ladies, Miss Gloria Swanson. Oh, would you rather sit? I tell you, you're more used to. sitting over here because twice you've been here and you've sat over there. Maybe we shouldn't fool with a good thing. I don't think we should. Okay. okay. <laughs> How oh, are you? Wow. I was going to come. I forgot all about it now. I was going to come out. Wait, they'll think you've been censored. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Oh, no, I wasn't going to speak loud because, after all, I'm getting a little fed up being referred to as a silent picture actress. Oh, but I see. After all gonna... these years now, I've, uh -huh. called, I've called myself Big Mouth. Even though you were silent in so many films. That was 1923, that film, wasn't it? Yes, and yeah. here in New York. And I left California because I didn't want to play those femme fatales and wear a, just have a dress with a train that was longer and longer. Yeah. And so I, well, I lied to them and I got to, uh, to New York by some trickery of mine mm -hmm. and uh, finally said, uh, give me Zaza. And that began the character stuff and doing comedy again because, see, up to that time I'd been playing these very serious femme fatales with, you know, all kinds of headdos and A lady Valentino. And nothing like this ever. We yeah. had everything. They used to say everything out of the kitchen stove. Feathers, yeah. sequins, beads, you know, the works. Yeah. We all dressed that way then. It, was there ever a woman who didn't think Valentino was sexy, by the way? You knew him. Are well, you? I had no occasion to think that he was, except I would say... <laughs> <laughs> 
We uh, planned, did a picture together, and of mm -hmm. course, you know, you sort of get into the mood of a picture once in a while, but um, he was ex uh, different, that was it. I think he had that Latin smoldering type, you know, the rest of them like Wally Reed was blonde and so on. No, no, no reflection, dear. You know, oh, that's all right. I, blonde. I wanted to look like him. I'd put Vaseline on my hair. <laughs> no, but he was a Latin type and we've had the other type, yeah. the Nordic thing so long. And that was probably the reason for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I'll continue with you. Before I introduce my next guest, I would like to show you a film uh, clip from one of her early films. And in her case, early films me mean silent. Uh, it, they don't make faces like that anymore, as you know, is a great line from Sunset Boulevard. But this is not from that. This scene is fairly contemporary. You want to see it? Here it is. <laughs> 